scene did not work for the author of it and it's not going to work for anybody who chooses to team up with the devil the Bible says somewhere uh, in the book of Proverbs that if I add to the word of the Lord and God's going to rebuke you and prove you a liar and that's what the devil tries to do it tries to add distortions to the word of God it says you will die God says you will God, you will not die God says you will die it says you will you will not die are trying to twist the word of God and going against God's orders and the Bible warns the people in the book of Proverbs that do not add to his word because if you add to his word God's gonna rebuke you and prove it to be a lie and that's another reason people need to recognize that sin is not gonna work for anybody because God has designed creation to react against sin when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden they automatically became fearful even though God did not pronounce any judgment on them God came into the garden the cool of the day and he said Adam where are you the first thing Adam said I'm afraid God didn't even curse him God hasn't said anything that you're afraid uh, God didn't say that he just said where are you and Adam said I'm afraid so that means that the systems that God's placed in motion are already kicked into gear after Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden without God saying anything about it. And then when God started saying, cursed is the ground because of you, uh, you're going to bear your children in pain, that's not God trying to knock them on the head and say, I'm going to beat you guys up. God is just saying that because of what you've done, this is the way creation is going to respond to you. Because God's placed laws and systems in motion to govern his creation. You guys have stepped on the left side, on the other side, on the wrong side of the law. The law is going to be designed right now to work against you. Not to give favor to you, but to work against you, take favor away from you. But I'm creating a plan in motion to take you out of that. And that plan is found in Christ Jesus when the seed of the woman is going to be born to bruise the head of the devil. So we're talking about all these concepts so people can appreciate uh, the, 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 whole, the whole concept of, of laws and systems and understanding laws and systems that God's placed in motion to govern his creation and appreciate the fact that God is not against us. God is for us. Sin is the devil's property. I want to return the devil back to him so I can accept the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. When I accept the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, I want to further go ahead and seek to know God and identify all the laws that God's placed in motion to govern his creation so I can take treat those laws with respect God is not against you God is for you so this is the first section of the book that we we wrote my wife and I Lana Nito Lude wrote um, 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 a few months ago concerning the concept of the overcomer secret and the the title of the section is understanding laws and systems uh, he has four chapters in it and we've tried to cover uh, the the key points in all the chapters covered in this section called a uh, position for victory um, understanding natural laws and um, natural systems and chapter 3 talks about God's ways and God's actions and chapter 4 talks about spiritual laws so we understand what what it means to be positioned for victory it means God is not against man is against the devil who tricked man into sin and rebellion with him uh, we understand examples of natural laws the law of gravity the law of electricity the law of sowing and the law of reaping the law of giving time between the time you're going to sow and the time you want to reap uh, we understand God's ways and God's actions God's ways uh, just refers to the laws that God's placed in motion to govern his creation the word ways is another word that can be used to define laws and systems or principles technologies procedures all synonyms that we can relate with in the 21st century and those laws and those systems those ways they govern God's actions and if we cry out to God we are going to be taught the ways of the Lord just like Moses cried out to God and was taught the ways of the Lord the Bible says in the book of Psalms in Psalm 25 verse 9 that the meek will he teach his ways so if Moses cried out to the Lord Exodus chapter 33 verse 13 that God should teach him his ways and based on the evidence in the book of Psalms in Psalm 103 verse 7 we know that Moses was taught the ways of the Lord it was because Moses had a humble disposition that he was taught the ways of the Lord and since God is not a respecter of persons if we choose to cry out for insight with 
a honest attitude, with a humble attitude, and asking God to teach us, God is going to respond favorably based on the humility of our hearts to teach us His ways. God is going to respond favorably based on the humility of our hearts to make us understand the details of the laws that govern creation so that we can stay on the positive side of those laws that govern creation. And that's what this book is dedicated to unraveling, to unraveling the details that people need to understand concerning what to do to stay on the positive side of the laws that govern creation. And we give example of some spiritual laws that we're going to be concentrating on it's going forward in the book. The law of sin and death, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and how the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus was designed to trump the law of sin and death. Why would the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus be designed to trump the law of sin and death? Because we understand that sin did not work for the author of it. It didn't work for the devil. We saw in the book of Isaiah and the book of Ezekiel, the devil rebelled against God. He was placed in the Garden of Eden. God kicked him out. God tells us where the Garden of Eden is located. Based on Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, that the Garden of Eden is located in heaven, uh, somewhere close to the throne of God. And we can see that in the book of Revelation as well. The tree of life, which is in the center of the garden, was located close to the throne of God. The devil was there, and God kicked him out. The Garden of Eden is not anywhere in this planet. This planet is the place we were kicked to, and that's the reason God says we are strangers on the earth. It makes a lot of sense right now when we start seeing all this, all this, all the scriptures, interpreting one scripture in the light of another, another scripture, so we can understand the whole counsel of God. There are several reasons why the Garden of Eden cannot be anywhere in this planet, because this is the place we were kicked to. Firstly. Because we cannot see any angel right now guarding the way to the tree of life. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, after we fell in the Garden of Eden, that he placed an angel to guard the way to the tree of life. God says, chase them out of the garden so that they do not lay their hands on the tree of life and eat from it and overcome their sin problem. And if we say the Garden of Eden is somewhere in the Middle East, then we should be able to see some angel guarding the way to the Tree of Life, which is the center of the garden. But there is no angel in the Middle East guarding any tree, guarding the access to any tree. So the Tree of Life is not in the Middle East. The Garden of Eden is not in the Middle East. The Garden of Eden is exactly where God says it is, based on the evidence of the book of Revelation, based on the evidence of the book of Ezekiel, based on the evidence of the book of Isaiah, based on the evidence of the book of Genesis. It is located close to the throne of God. The devil was there, and God kicked him out of it. Same didn't work for the devil. God kicked him out of the Garden of Eden. It didn't work for us when we started teaming up with the devil in the Garden of Eden. We got kicked out of it as well. So sin is not going to work for anybody on this planet. That's the point we're trying to get people to know that God has to design another law to help us overcome the vortex of sin and death because sin is not going to work for anybody to produce the peace and the joy and the tranquility that man wants. And that law that God has designed to make us to help us overcome the vortex of sin and death is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. To return our access to the life of God in the Garden of Eden. How do we know that the life of God is the solution to the sin and death problem? We know the life of God is the solution to sin and death problem based on the account in the book of Genesis. Uh, when God says that, uh, uh, I don't want them to touch the tree of life. Because if they tr touch it, then they're going to live forever. So God, implicitly, based on that portion of the, of the Bible, lets us know that the life of God is the answer to the sin problem. But God restricts our access to the life of God because he's not going to give us access to the life of God uh, outside the confines of his system of justice. Because if God were to restore our access to the life of God, then God will be technically obligated to restore the devil's access to the life of God. So God lets us know, I understand the solution to their problem is to reach over and eat from the tree of life. But I'm not going to let them touch the tree of life right now. Because I understand that I need to put some certain, certain, certain parameters of justice in place before I can do that. Someone has to pay the price for their sins. So God initiated a plan of redemption for Jesus to come to pay the price for our sins to get us reconnected to the life of God that we lost in the Garden of Eden. That is the reason the law is called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It is only operable in Christ Jesus because only Jesus was able to fulfill the dictates of the commandments to regain access to the life of God that we lost in the Garden of Eden. 
That is the reason we said the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is one of the cardinal laws that God has placed in motion to govern his creation. And we're going to try to do our best possible to make people understand the elements upon which the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is built. So, um, section one is all about understanding laws and systems. And God has helped us to... Um, cover four chapters in one hour of message so we hope people are able to take advantage of that and to go back to the book itself to read through the chapters and understand all the scriptures that we're talking about to make people understand that there are certain things called laws and systems in God's creation and God's designed those laws and systems not because God wants to hurt man but because God wants to position his man for victory so what we're talking about this morning is the overcomers secret part one. Amen. All right. Let's take another break. Go through your notes for a moment and answer the following questions. Question one. Who is the root of the treason in the Garden of Eden? A. Adam. B, Eve, C, the serpent, who is Lucifer, or D, none of the above. The answer is C, the serpent, who is Lucifer. Question two. Which of the following is a critical attitude to have to understand the ways of the Lord? A. Happiness B. Humility C. Pride D. Both A and B or E. A and C The answer is B, humility. Question three. Jesus called Satan a murderer from the beginning and blank because Satan started the concept of willful disobedience. A, a restless wanderer on the earth. B, a stiff necked person. C, an unbelieving generation, or D, the father of lies. The answer is D, Satan is the father of lies. Question four. God has placed laws and systems in motion to govern creation. Is this A, true, or B, false? The answer is A, true. We appreciate the time you have taken to listen to this message, and we sincerely hope it has been a blessing to you. If it has, please do tell someone else about it. And remember, God cares, and so do we. Jesus is Lord. <laughs>